Hi and welcome to Home Assistant running on Synology inside Docker. Today we'll be playing once again with Vertainer, so we'll start in 10 seconds. Before we go any further, I really would like to thank all the members who have joined my channel. Thank you very much, your support really means a lot. And now, let's get cracking with the video. It has been some time since the Portainer version 2.0 was released, and it's about time for me to record a video on how to upgrade your existing Portainer 1.24, for example, to version 2.0. And unfortunately, there isn't a simple way to upgrade. The only way to upgrade is really to remove your existing Portainer configuration and start from the scratch. Not from the scratch, but you will have to type in the command once again to install it on your system. But what Portainer is? Well, Portainer is a simple web tool that allows you to control and look after your Docker containers and Docker images. Yes, Synology has Docker user interface on the Synology DSM, but to access Portainer is much easier since this is a simple web interface, you just need to type in your username and password and you can access it. And this is how Portainer looks. If you look at here, you can see that we are running version 1.24.2 and current version of Portainer CE is 2.1.1. Let's go quickly through the user interface. If we click here, we will present it with a list. I, myself, mostly use just container, images, sometimes network, volumes rarely, and that's it. And this is enough for my need. If we go to images, you will see here a list of all the images that have been downloaded from the Docker Hub and are available for the easy installation. Well, everything is available for the easy installation, but these are the images that do not need to be downloaded from the internet. They are already here. And from those images, we create containers. So let's go to containers. I have two containers. One is Portainer. The other one is Zigbee to MQTT, or how I misspelled it, it's Zogby to MQTT. So what can you do? Let's look here. You can start and stop the container. You can kill it. This is for stop. You can restart it, which should be graceful shutdown of the container and then restart. Pause it, resume it, remove it, meaning delete the container itself, or recreate it. This is intended to recreate from the scratch, delete and create from the scratch container by using the last save variables, for example, command line. And also you have option to duplicate and edit, meaning it will create a duplicated container and some of the options will be available for change. We have here information about container, ownership, Registry, this is pulled from Docker Hub. Container details, what volumes are we using and what network this container is attached to. Currently, it is attached to host network. But for what I use it? I use it to check logs. This is one of the main functions I use Portainer. I use it also to see stats. This will give information about the usage of the host system by this Docker container. And then I also use console. Console allows you to log in inside the Docker container. This may be useful if, for example, you need to run command there. Just be careful, most of the container settings or most of the things that you save inside the Docker container will not be available if you delete it or if you install new version. For this, you need to create permanent volume or map your existing host volume to the folder inside the Docker container itself. And the last command here is attach. If you have seen my videos where I create Docker containers, you have noticed that I use command dash itd. This means that I want to detach terminal and run it as a daemon. Well, all of these Docker containers are running in the background, but we cannot see the output of the console. In order for us to see it, we need to click on this attach. And here now we will see the output that should normally go to the screen if you are running that same application. So this is useful for debugging and fixing errors. Let's stop talking about the Portainer functionality and let's go and install newer version of Portainer. If you've never used Portainer so far, you can skip to the time mark that's shown currently on the screen. And for all of you that already have Portainer installed, let's follow a couple of steps to remove it from our system. First step is to go to Synology. In Synology, open Docker, 
go to container, click on portainer, stop it, right click it, actions and select delete. Now we have deleted current portainer container. The next step for you is to log in to the terminal or connect to your Synology IP address via PuTTY or any other terminal application. The next step is needed only if this is the first time that you are installing Pertainer. For all those that had Pertainer running before, you probably already have a folder that will be keeping permanent files. So let's first check it. I will change volume to volume 1, Docker. And we will list here the contents of this folder. We have a couple of folders here, but we are interested in the folder Portainer. If you do not have a folder called Portainer, just type here following mkdir. I will be using full path. And the folder Portainer. Press enter. Of course, I cannot recreate it because it already exists, but if you didn't install Portainer before, the folder will now be created. Let me clear this. And now we need to start typing the command that is used to download and configure our future Portainer installation. In the first part of the video, I will show you how to do the simplest possible installation of Portainer. Let me show you that. Type in following, sudo docker run we will give the name to container, name equals container CE. Next, we will be using detached mode once again, minus D. For the network, you have two options. You can either use host network or you can use the internal Docker network. I myself prefer to use the host network and that's why I will be using following command net equals host. If you do not want to use the host network, the other option for you is to use the Docker network. And to do that, you just remove this line, net equal host, and instead of that, type in minus P, and then space with the two port numbers, 9000, column 9000. This will map the external port from where you access 9000 to the internal docker port 9000. If for example your external port 9000 is already occupied, you can type something else, for example 9999 and map it with the column to port 9000. The last number should always stay the same, 9000. Next step is to map the volume. This means that we will be mapping the folder we created previously, portainer folder or portainer subfolder, to the internal data folder inside the Docker container. And we do that by the command minus V, full path, volume one, Docker, portainer, and we map it with the data folder inside the container. Next step is to map docker.soc or docker socket with the internal docker socket for the portainer. This path may vary depending on the operating system or version of Linux you are using, but for Synology it should be following. Minus V, var, run, docker.soc. And we are mapping it with the internal, and this should be always the same, var, run, docker sock. If you are not using Synology, please verify that your internal port is var run and that you can file docker.sock there. And the last part of the command is the name of the image we want to download from the Docker Hub. In this case, this will be portainer-ce for the latest version. Portainer, portainer-ce. And for the next step, we have to press enter. You may be presented with the input for the password. It depends if you are already in an elevated mode or not. I'm already running this as a root user, which is not that good idea. Let's press enter. The image is now getting downloaded. And it is now installed. To verify, let's go back to Synology. As you can see in Synology, we now have a new portainer called portainer-ce 
running for one minute. And if we double click, go to log files, we will see that it has been attached and listening on the port 9000. So in order to access it, let's open up a web browser, type in the IP address of our Synology machine or any Linux machine where you're running this host with the port 9000. Since I already did create a username and password in my previous version of the pertainer, I do not have to create a new username and password because that was kept in a permanent folder. If this is the first time you're running Pertainer C, this is the place where you should now select a username and type in password two times to verify that you didn't spell something wrong. Next time when you log in, you will see a screen like this. Let me log in. And as you can see, this is it. We are now running Pertainer version 2.1.1. We can dismiss this news because, yeah, we already know. Since I also previously had Pertainer configured, I was not presented with the screen. If this is the first time that you have entered the Pertainer, you would be presented with a screen allowing you to select local or remote connections. For this, we need to connect locally. So this is the one. We have, as you can see, three images. And why three images? Because previously we were using older Pertainer image and now we are using newer Pertainer image. If you, for example, run Watchtower, either manually or automatically, whenever it downloads new image, it will automatically install it. You would be here left with the images that are not used anymore. So you can also use Portainer to clean the old images out. Just select it and click on remove. Okay, let's go to containers. And once again, you can see that we have two containers and only one is working. Yes, my Zogby or Zigbee to MQTT is still out. And this is it for the simple part of the installation. So what about adding the HTTPS? Well, that's no problem. For that, let's go back to the terminal. Let me clear the screen, but also let me reuse this command. So what you have to do here to be able to use default Synology certificates inside your pertainer and make your pertainer connection more secure. Well, in effect, we have to add a couple of things. Let me first remove this Docker Hub image name. And we now have to map the folder where Synology is keeping certificates to the internal folder where pertainer is expecting certificates. This will be minus V user Sino ATC certificate system default and we now map this with the certs or the certificates. So this is the folder where Synology is keeping all the certificates or default certificate and we are mapping that folder to the internal folder called certs inside our pertainer. Next, we have to add the command we just deleted. It is pertainer, pertainer, minus CE. And we have to add a couple more flags. First, we have to enable SSL. This is done with the minus or double minus SSL. Then we need to specify the part to the certificate. This is done with the command minus SSL certificate. And location will be certs with the name cert.pem. This is the default name for the Synology certificate. But we also need to specify key. SSL key. Folder once again will be certs. And name of the file is pri.pem. This is the default name from the Synology for the private key. If we now press enter, we would repeat the same thing that we did previously, but we will be instructing our system to map the folder where Synology keeps certificates to the internal search folder for the pertainer. And then we'll be telling pertainer to start the SSL and to use this for the certificate and this for the private key. That way, whenever Synology renews your certificate, it will be automatically mapped to the pertainer and you will always have HTTPS connection for the IP address or domain name that matches your Synology name. And that's it.
if I now press enter, nothing will happen because I already have created container with the same name and I will get error. Let me show you. And yes, I get the error. Okay, but the other reason why I cannot do that is because on my test setup, I do not have even the default Synology certificate. And this is it for this Home Assistant running on Synology inside Docker. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video and that you find Pertainer useful. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always find me on the Discord server. The link to Discord server is down in the description of the video, but you can also leave comment down in the comment section below. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future updates. If you did like this video and would like others to see it, press the thumbs up because it means not just a lot to me, but also to YouTube algorithms. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.